Am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend she needs to get a job while her sister is dying? My 27 male girlfriend, Sarah, 27 female, sister, 40 female, who she is real close to, is dying. They found cancer and it is terminal and aggressive, so she has four years max, but more likely one or two years. The news is extremely shocking and upsetting for me, but it's way worse for my girlfriend, obviously. She has not been working because she is doing a course and is only missing a few assignments. She sat me down and said that she was going to drop out and spend time with her sister. I told her I thought spending time with her sister was a great idea, but she needed to finish the course in the meanwhile, and then I could support both of us for a few more months instead of her getting a job right away and make decent money, and she could spend that time with her sister. Sarah got extremely upset and said that I was a materialistic person who just didn't care or understood how upset she is and that she will not finish her course or get a job to any stage before her sister passes away. I said I'd help her out and that she didn't need to hand in perfect assignments, just a bare minimum to pass the course. I said she could even move in with her sister short term. Sister lives alone and is divorced, if she wants and come home at the weekend. Sarah's plan of not working for the foreseeable future is dependent on me working a super stressful job with long hours and supporting her mentally and monetarily until her sister's death and potentially beyond. I've already been doing this over a year at this stage and I was aiming to move to a non-managerial and less paid but less stressful job mid-year because the stress is physically harming me. Cannot sleep, hair falling out in chunks which is apparently unrelated to age slash panic attacks. But I cannot do that if I'm the only one working. I was also trying to save my Christmas bonus, but she keeps showing me clothes she wants and saying, My life is so upsetting. Why can't I have these pretty clothes? So I will buy them for her. I am trying to be understanding because I know she must be devastated. But I also need to have an idea of when she will get a job again. Last night, I sat her down and told her she needs to get a job. Even just part-time, by the end of the summer. Course is finished in a few weeks because I need to move to a less stressful job. She said my work stress cannot compare to the stress of a loved one dying and that I'm just being dramatic. She also told me she's planning a really expensive trip for whenever travel goes back to normal to blow off steam, but she has no savings, so I am expected to pay for the whole trip. I told a few people and they said I was being dramatic and a few more years of the high stress job will not kill me. But other friends said that my girlfriend's demands are ridiculous and that she was not planning to work even before this. Am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend she needs to get a job by the end of the summer while her sister is dying? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your partner's grief, however profound, does not justify her incredible entitlement. It's sickening that she'd use her sister's condition as ammunition to manipulate you. I'm disgusted by your partner's behavior. You should be too. I couldn't explain it better due to word count, but it's actually a lovely idea although super expensive. After her sister's death, she's planning to go on a trip her sister has always dreamed of going on and bring some of the ashes with her. The issue is that the trip she wants to go on is around northern European countries, Norway, Iceland, etc for six weeks, and she said that even though her sister's idea was off going to hostels, etc., she cannot deal with that and she wants to go to good hotels. I explained I cannot get six weeks off work, and even if I could, that would blow all my savings because those countries are expensive. And she basically said I was just shutting down her way for remembering her sister. Good lord, your girlfriend is truly awful. Please end this relationship. You need to take care of yourself. Especially since your girlfriend apparently doesn't care about your well-being in the slightest. If she is really going to make her sister the center of her life, she can move in with her and help care for her. And let you take a less stressful job and stop losing your hair from stress. Ditch the selfish girl. She has shown you who she is. Not day hole. You are not responsible for funding your girlfriend's housing, food, transportation, or vacation costs. And the fact that she is trying to guilt you into ignoring your own stress and overwork is unconscionable. Why not suggest to your girlfriend that she move in with her sister? It seems that's the only relationship that she's willing to put time and effort into. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for getting real with my stepsister? In turn, causing her to cut off part of my family till I apologize? So I, female 29, have a stepsister, female 30, from my dad's marriage. I'll call her Kate. 
a bit of context on Kate. We meet 16 years ago when our parents started dating. Kate is and always has been a judgmental, entitled bully. For example, when our parents got married, she had to have a white puffy dress. She had to have the biggest room and the best things growing up. And if, God forbid, any of us got anything from our mom or grandparents, she'd have to get better or our stuff would disappear. If she doesn't like something, she'll say it triggers her, throws a toddler-style tantrum on social media till she gets her way. But what really makes her bad is the constant shaming she does. Off the top of my head, I can think of the times she's shamed me from being too thin, my brother for wanting to be a policeman, us for being religious, even her own sister for having a planned C-section. When called on it, she does the same thing, says she's just telling it how it is, then blaming everyone for picking on her. Her mom usually makes a scene about family, and Kate is just amazingly honest, which apparently is something that needs to be valued. This all came to a head today. I went to the hospital yesterday, March 31, and shockingly found out I was three months pregnant with twins. I'm not going into details about my medical history, but me getting pregnant is nothing short of a miracle. I honestly never thought that with my issues I'd ever be able to carry a child. Me and my fiancé cried happy tears for hours, then excitedly posted it on Facebook. The fact that it was after midnight and April Fool's didn't even cross our mind. After a few calls from family, we both turned off our phones and went to bed. I woke up this morning to what I thought would be congratulations, but Kate first blocked me, then sent her followers to all my social media to give me crap. Apparently, Kate called me out to her followers for being an inconsiderate witch for making pregnancy jokes, when I should know about fertility issues, naming my private issues, and dragged me with a lot of more stupid crap. This is where I might be the a-hole. Instead of calling Kate and talking to her, I blew up. I posted my scanned pictures saying, Well, Kate, as always, you have to make everything about you. I'm actually pregnant. Instead of blocking me, you should have maybe messaged me. But as ever with your vile, sorry, real self, you took to the internet to throw a tantrum. You're a 30-year-old woman, Kate, who lives with her mother and has an allowance from mommy. Not to mention you can't keep a relationship slash friendship because dear old real Kate can't stay faithful or out of drama for too long. Hope you won't get too offended, Kate, as I'm just being real. Long story short, Kate got a lot of backlash and deleted her social media. She's cut off me, my dad, brother and her sister till she gets a public apology from us all. They call her on it too. Her mom is demanding I apologize to make peace and Kate has been punished enough. So... Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. The trash took itself out. Closed the door and changed the locks. Yep, stupid games and stupid prizes. Kate can pound sand and slash or kick rocks. Opie's reply was perfect in every way. Sadly, the only thing that works against bullies is very firm boundaries and very harsh consequences for breaking them. Or being a bigger, scarier bully. Kate is still trying to get her way, so she still hasn't learned. Hopefully, everybody keeps standing firmly. Sounds like y'all finally got some peace. Why mess with that? Not the a-hole. Don't apologize. Not the a-hole. Your stepmom needs to remember who she is talking to when she wants to make demands. You're not the one living in her house and mooching off her money. She doesn't get to boss you around just because she's sleeping with your dad. If stepmom wants to demand an apology, she should start with a 30-year-old child starting fights who she actually has some power over. Not a 29-year-old adult who has her life together. Not they all at all. Kate sounds like a whole lot of negativity you don't need in your life. Especially because you're carrying twins, which by nature is high risk. You don't need that stress in your life at all. And Kate needs to grow the heck up. Congratulations on your babies-to-be. Thank you. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister to leave because of her fear? My 22 female, sister 17 female, is afraid of snakes. She hates them, can't be near them. My boyfriend, 21 male, is the opposite. He loves them and we actually have one, two female. Because of this, we normally go see her or if she comes to our place, my boyfriend's sister will take our girl for the day. So, we have a pool. And it's been really hot where we live, so we invited my sister and my parents around. Like normal, my boyfriend's sister came and took our snake. 
when they arrived, everything was fine until we got into the pool. My boyfriend has a tattoo of a snake. It's a blacked out silhouette that wraps around both of his arms and his back. When my sister saw it, she freaked out and told me to tell him to cover it. She knew about his tattoo. She just expected him to cover it, which she can't do without putting on a long sleeve t-shirt. I told her no. She then went over to him and asked him to leave because he knows about her fear. This annoyed me, and I told her that if she has an issue with it, she should leave. This is his house, not hers. She got upset and just sat inside the whole time. When they left, my mom told me that I was rude to my sister and we knew about her fear and that we ruined her day. Now I'm starting to think that I could have handled the situation better. So, am I the a-hole? Edit. I've been talking to someone in DMs and they said I should add some stuff we talked about to my post. My boyfriend's tattoo is very important to him. We got our current baby after his old snake dies. The tattoo is based on a picture of his old snake draped over his back and arms. Also, self-expression is very important to my boyfriend. He grew up in a very restrictive household. His mother controlled what he did, how he acted, and what he wore. We didn't just move our snake because her enclosure is built into a large bookcase in our living room. Also, this only happens once every month or so. We normally visit her. Also, my boyfriend's sister is a huge reptile nerd and loves our little girl almost as much as we do. My boyfriend actually has an irrational animal fear of his own. Butterflies. He knows that not all phobias work the same, but he thinks that her asking him to leave is ridiculous. Also, when I say that it's his house, I mean it's his house, not ours. Also to the few people asking how a 21-year-old can afford a house with a pool, my boyfriend has been in the entertainment industry since he was a kid. Think child actor slash model. He hated it and no longer does it. If your sister is so afraid of snakes that even a tattoo of one is going to make her freak out, then she has a problem. She needs to leave your lovely pool and so home and think about getting some therapy. Not a hole. First of all, not a hole, and then this. I do think therapy is the best response here. If your sister has a fear so severe that it doesn't allow her to see a drawing of it, she should really see a specialist. A hyper-realistic tattoo of a tarantula would scare the hell out of me. I don't think that's too out of the ordinary for people with phobias, but freaking out over a blacked-out silhouette is extreme. She definitely needs to talk to somebody. Edited to add, I've gotten a lot of comments in this vein, so I feel like I should say, she's still out of line for asking him to cover it. She, sister not Opie, is the a-hole. She should absolutely have either handled her crap herself or just left. I'm just pointing out that I don't think it's insane to be afraid of an image, although her reaction to a non-realistic image is pretty wild. Not a hole. If she really is afraid of a tattoo of a snake, she needs serious therapy. Imagery of snakes are everywhere, and that's a very intense phobia of true. To be honest though, this just seems like BS. Fears are hard to face and confront, but it seems weird to me that she has no problem making you all jump through hoops for her. Having a fear or phobia is very understandable, but the whole world can't realistically change for you. Not a hole. First, there's no way I could have known her fear of snakes would extend to a tattoo. I would not have thought that a tattoo would evoke the same level of fear as an actual snake. Two, you were doing a nice thing by inviting your sister to use the pool. You did not have to do this. You already went above and beyond by removing your snake from your home. 3. If a guest doesn't like something about the place slash people they are visiting, they leave. They do not expect, especially in the middle of the current world situation, people to leave their own home so the guest can be comfortable. Now, for the last story. Am I a hall for telling my parents off for babying my grown sister? For context, I'm 21 female and my sister is 30. We both have a job. She works at a grocery store and I work in a telephone company. My sister is always demanding things from my parents and me, and we must always cater to her demands. I work from home due to COVID, and my sister will get back home from her own job. And she'll shame me for not having a real job, and that I'm being lazy and pressures me to stop working so I can cook her some food. My parents also believe that, and make jokes about me not having a real job. A few months ago, I had to rush into the hospital because I had horrible migraines from having headphones on all the time and I had to get sick leave for a few days. 
My sister said I was faking it and my parents were laughing. She'll never go outside to do her own shopping. She always demands I go out and buy stuff for her. She expects me to make her online orders and pause whatever I'm doing at any moment just to do what she wants. I've set a boundary that I can no longer do this, and she's 30 years old. She should know how to do some stuff on her own, like going to the store, putting food in her plate, or making her online orders. My sister then cried to my mother that I was mean, and my parents got mad at me and called me horrible for not helping out my sister, and that I'm ashamed to them because I don't value my family. So please, Reddit, tell me. Am I the a-hole for having enough of this behavior? I'm expected to do everything for everyone in the house, especially my sister, yet the same energy is nowhere to be found when it comes to me. Your sister is 30 and works at a grocery store and still lives with her parents. You have much more of a promising job at a much younger age and clearly know how to take care of yourself a lot more. This isn't just babying. Your parents are ruining any chance your sister has of being self-sufficient. 100 times not the a holopi. You need to get out of that house and out of that situation ASAP before whatever dependent BS your sister is going on starts to seriously affect your well-being. And in the usual round of advice, make sure your family doesn't have access to your bank and credit accounts. That may mean moving to a different bank and changing passwords and everything. I mean, there is nothing inherently wrong with working in a grocery store. They are essentially workers, and we need to respect all jobs. Classism is not a good look. The real issue is the sister being entitled and treating others like crap that makes her the a-hole. Not her job. Not the a-hole. You're right for calling her and your parents out on this. It's tricky if you live with them, and I'd suggest the moment you can, you should move out. And I'm sure you do that too. But unfortunately, until they can see it from their side or until they're willing to listen, you won't be able to do much about this. I don't know why you're putting this on here. To vent? You know you're not the a-hole. People in toxic families often doubt themselves. Especially when everyone else is telling them they are the bad guy, 